get those souls into the cart. You two have been appointed to assist me, not slow me down. We must get these souls to the ferryman before the witching hour, and we've already wasted enough time waiting on you to do your jobs. Now, I am going to retrieve the last soul of the evening. While I am gone, make sure you get every single one onto that cart. When you're done, you'll come find me. Do not make me look for you, or you will suffer the consequences. I don't have to remind you both what happened to the last sleepers. Of course I get saddled with the two laziest sleepers I have ever encountered. Not since the incident of 1905. Those souls need to be taken to the docks, and death will be much displeased if I do not make the deadline. The amount of paperwork alone will be horrifying if I'm late. He can be a petty sort, and I wouldn't put it past him to think of some inconvenient task to punish me with. The last being who displeased death was forced to give a presentation to new hires on scythe safety. Ah. Here we are. The final soul should be in this domicile. Last room on the right. Huh. Seems like a nice little cabin. The cobblestone steps leading to the front door are flat enough to be skipped across the river Styx. Hmm. According to the order, this one passed due to a heart condition. Good. Then death shouldn't have a surprise for them. You there. Hello. You must be... Please don't scream. I am Cardlin. I've come... Hey, where are you going? Wait! No, if you would please... Stop yelling. I'm not going to hurt you. Enough! <clears throat> now, do I have your attention? Why are you covering your face? Oh, of course. One moment. Uh, humans. What do humans expect a henchman of death to look like? <clears throat> you can look now. The black robe and scythe are gone. Is that better? As I was trying to say before, my name is Cardlin, and I have come to collect you. <sighs> For what? You're dead. Really now, there is no need to carry on this way. I mean, just look around you. Does this place look like it's made for the living? No one can see or hear you. No. I am not death. I simply work for him. Yes, the death. Look, I can understand this may be terribly confusing for you, so I will try and explain it the best I can, all right? When someone passes away, regardless of cause, I am sent to collect the souls and carry them to the pass. The pa- <clears throat> Don't interrupt me. Like I was saying, the pass is the spiritual equinox between here, the underverse, and the afterlife. Humans call it limbo, and sleepers call it customs. Uh, oh, for God's sake. We're never going to get anywhere if you keep interrupting me. Look over there. Do you see those two hooded figures standing perfectly still next to the dilapidated cart? Those are my sleepers. Individuals who have died closest to my own death date. Sleepers are recruited by death and chosen, depending on how close their death is to my own. Sleepers generally do not speak, no. That is not their job. 
They are to assist me in loading souls into the cart and take them to the ferryman. Are you with me so far? Sort of. Very well. I'll explain further, but come along. We need to get moving. Why are you just standing there? You're dead. You can't stay here for the rest of eternity. Even if I weren't here, look down at your ankle. You see that? It's not a physical chain, obviously, since you're just a soul, but you are magically tethered to this cart and myself. Do not be alarmed. This is strictly a precautionary measure that happens to all the souls I collect. Will you just come along? You are the last on my list to collect this evening, and I would like to get moving instead of standing here and wasting time with you. Mean? Being mean implies feelings, more specifically feelings about you, to which I assure you I have none. Pardon. It may have been quite some time since you've escorted a soul to the past, but you don't need to be so harsh. The sad energy pulsating off her essence is only going to get more intense unless you take it easy. Uh, all right. Uh, I um, apologize. It's been a long time since I have conversed with a soul. Please don't cry. I know this is confusing, to say the least, and maybe a little bit um, scary. You've nothing to fear from me, all right? But I need you to walk with me. Mm. Thank you. Come on. You have a lot of ground to cover if we're going to make it to the pass on time. Hmm? You still have more questions. All right. I'm listening. Why does death need me? Well... Whoever dies closest to the new year is chosen to be Death's Collector. Death is nothing if not lazy, but he's also in charge of seven different realms, including this one. It became inevitable over time that he would have to delegate many of the responsibilities. Primarily, I gather souls and take them to the pass, but guiding the newly departed is not my only duty. I'm also Keeper of the Dead, responsible for guarding the graveyard, a place where souls who refuse to move on can roam. No, one does not have to move on to the afterlife, but I would recommend it. If a soul refuses to go through the past and into the afterlife, they do not get to roam freely in the Underverse. I, nor death, would allow it. They are taken and bound to the graveyard for the rest of eternity. It's an unnatural thing. Souls lingering too long here in the Underverse. Hmm? Well, what once tied them to the living realm begins to diminish, and they tend to go a little mad. Souls are designed to innately feel the need to move forward, you know, to the next place. And when they don't, they drift aimlessly through the graveyard, with no sense of who or what they are, or where they are. They're just... there. No, I cannot force them to move on to the hereafter. It's actually more dangerous if a wandering spirit is taken from the graveyard rather than a soul not going through the pass. The number one rule of the Underverse is to never disturb the living realm. 
doing so often causes cataclysmic consequences. This is why all souls are tethered once they come into the Underverse, to ensure they do not make their way back to the living. There have been a few occasions where a soul refused to go anywhere except back to the world of the living, and safeguards had to be put into place. Hmm. You understand the tether now? That's good. I may work for death, but I am not cruel. Hmm. A bit rough around the edges, you say? Uh, I suppose on that we can partially agree. Consequences? Oh, right, of course. Let me get back to that. Are you familiar with the Black Plague? Well, that happened because a soul was stolen from the graveyard and pushed back into the living realm. Needless to say, one flea bite later and we had a death toll of 20 million on our hands. It spread so... so fast. There was so much death. The screens alone... Uh. The ferrymen, of course, had the time of their lives, taking all those souls to the other side didn't matter how it all came about. Oh, I always forget that each realm has a different name for them. Just think of the ferrymen as reapers. They will carry your soul into the afterlife once I take you to the pass. I was not responsible for that debacle. I'll have you know that since becoming Keeper of the Dead seven centuries ago, not one of my charges has ever been taken from the graveyard. The audacity. You just assumed. Listen. Death does not take compounded and world-altering mistakes lightly. If I had made such a grievous error, I would not be here. I took the place of the previous Collector. What happened to him? Hmm. I was not given the particulars, but I have it on good authority that they are in a place that can never be found, even by death himself. When a mistake of that magnitude is caused, everyone is punished, whether they were directly involved or not. The ghoul who pushed the soul back into the living realm was disintegrated by a force no one could see. The Reapers, who were rumored to have made a bet with the ghouls, were bound to death's sickle. Is that bad? Well, yes. Reapers have one job, and that is to escort souls to the afterlife, after they go through customs. I... right, the pass. It is their only life source. But if they're bound by or to death, and they are prohibited from escorting any souls and eventually waste away into nothingness. It's a very steep punishment, but definitely one that fits the crime. Nevertheless, do you understand now? Correct. I am not death, nor a reaper. And <clears throat> I either take new souls to the pass, or I keep the ones that are going to go crazy. Hmm. I suppose that's an oversimplification of everything I just explained to you, but yes. By the gods, were you this disrespectful in life? Ha! Ah, cheeky, you say. Indeed. I almost feel sorry for the Reaper scheduled at the pass today. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm starting to remember why I used to like conversing with newly passed souls. Even if it has been a few decades. Please, mm, uh, tell me about yourself. 
What do you do in the world of the living? Oh, you are a ballerina. What kind of... Oh, ballet. Hmm. What are you doing? A uh, plie. Oh, plie. And that is an... An arabesque. Oh. That is quite beautiful. You must be very graceful. How long were you a dancer? Twelve years, a long time. By the gods, how are you doing that? You are standing on the tips of your toes, doesn't that hurt? Don't laugh. You're gonna make me dizzy if you keep spinning around like that. And why do it if it hurts? Some things are worth the pain. Hmm. Can't say I completely agree with that lopsided logic, but then again, everyone handles their own death differently. What do you mean you weren't supposed to become a dancer? Being paralyzed from the waist down at such a young age must have been very difficult. Ah, I see. Well, it would be natural to feel lost and saddened by what happened to you. Yes, I can imagine you felt like your dream was fading away. No, oh, but you were a stubborn child. <laughs> Why is that not a surprise? <laughs> mm. How long were you in therapy before you could walk again? Seven years. Right, blind me, that sounds like a hopeless situation. But you realized, eventually, all the pain you experienced would allow you to dance. This is what you meant earlier when you said some things are worth the pain, isn't it? Why do you keep touching your neck? You normally wear a necklace. Oh, not recently, because the chain had broken. Hmm. Well, why does that make you sad? gift from your mother for when you completed physical therapy. Unfortunately, once a soul passes from the living realm to the underverse, any physical items are removed as they have no place in the afterlife. My apologies. If I may, what sort of necklace was it? A lotus flower. Oh, that is peculiar. Because it represents inner strength. Because you kept going even when it was all too much. Ah, yes. I can empathize. Did you always keep it with you? At least before the chain broke? I can imagine you couldn't wear it while performing. Ah, tucked away. And the bodice of your tutu. <laughs> Nestled against your heart because you felt it gave you strength. Hmm. You are a strange human. What? I was smiling. No, I don't think I was. I... It's a nice smile. Uh, I... 
Uh, hmm. No one has ever said that before. <clears throat> Thank you. Your smile is very lovely as well. This is going differently than I thought. Well, usually the sleepers are the ones I send to collect the majority of the souls. Before you, I hadn't conversed with the newly departed soul in two centuries. No, it was not because I became too busy to escort them all. I, a day in the Underverse is not the same as a day in the realm of the living. The duties just became... Hmm. Suffocating, I suppose. It's a bit of a long story, and I don't think that... You really want to know? Well... All right. Remember how I said that if a soul were to stay in the Underverse, their humanity eventually disappears? Well, that doesn't happen to Collectors. Death did not want any of us to become an empty shell of a soul. We'd be completely incapable of doing our jobs. So he changed the bylaws to ensure that our humanity stayed tied to our souls. Yes, I suppose that does sound like a good thing, but... It's not easy to be a collector when your humanity is still intact. When Death initially chose me as his collector, he made it seem like a great honor. You'll be Death's right-hand man. You'll have a great deal of power, and creatures near and far will fear you. Mm. But he failed to warn me of how difficult the job would be. The... The emotional output of these souls feels like being constantly pushed underwater before, before one can take a bath. You don't understand. Many of these souls are never prepared to die. Like yourself, meeting me for the first time is a shock to them. Some are terrified, others are confused, while others rage against the injustice of it all. As a new collector, the first few weeks gathering souls was... <sighs> fractious, to say the least. My humanity weighed like a heavy cloak around my shoulders, and I just wanted to tell them that it had all been a bad dream. I became too invested in each and every soul I came across. I'd extend our path to the past just to give them more time, sit with them until they calmed down, even if it was only a little while. You see, when your soul is attached to your corporeal form, it's easier to find a physical outlet for your emotions. Yes, like crying. Or hitting something when you're angry, or hugging someone when you feel lonely. When you're just the essence, without the human form, all of those emotions are just walls of powerful energy. And these walls of energy would wash over me in waves, and I... Well, I couldn't survive under the onslaught. In the end, I had to delegate the role of collecting to the sleepers, never having any contact with the souls unless absolutely necessary. Uh, well, I'm escorting you, personally, because the sleepers I have are fairly new and quite lazy. They haven't settled into their roles just yet, and they were falling behind. Death hates additional paperwork. No, it will be fine. The pass isn't too much farther. Despite your initial reaction, you seem to be taking everything in stride. Frankly, escorting you to the pass has been... has been the most entertaining event this century.
Hmm? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Was what worth it? Oh. Helping those souls. Hmm. I suppose it was. Before it became too difficult to endure. I still have my humanity, so I'd like to think and hope that I could have made the very end a little less terrifying, at least for a few of them. Ah, here we are. We've reached the pass. Were you expecting something different? <laughs> I told you, death is anything but conventional. Are you ready? Oh. You're... You're welcome. It's been a genuine pleasure. Now, all you need to do is walk ahead about ten yards, and then you'll disappear into the entrance of the pass. No, no. The door is hidden from human view. You'll walk forward, and it will suddenly seem like you're in a different room. The Reaper will then guide you into the afterlife, all right? All right. Wait, uh, there's one more thing. Here, open your hand. Please. You won't drop it, I promise. Yes, your necklace. <laughs> I said physical items do not pass with humans into the Underverse. I did not say I could not conjure items. I am Death's second in command and the Soul Collector, after all. I do have considerable power. It's not important. I just thought you'd want to have it for the rest of your journey. Uh, are you crying again? I don't know. Uh, please don't. I don't know if I can... Oh, they're happy tears. Mm, well, that's okay then. Do you need more... Oof. <laughs> An embrace. <laughs> this is highly unorthodox. Oh, it's... It's all right. I don't mind. You're welcome. You should get going. Our time is almost up. Why are you hesitating? You don't have another question, do you? <laughs> what? Uh, no, I couldn't possibly accept such a gift. But you said... I... Uh, why? To remember my inner strength. This is uh, very thoughtful, but <laughs> if I don't accept it, you'll come back here <laughs> and twirl circles around me until I'm too dizzy to stand. Hmm. Such a grievous threat. Hmm. All right. You insist, little one. Now, off you go. Will you ever see me again? Perhaps. Goodbye, my lovely ballerina.